people who are leading 12 different breakout sessions. And so what people will do with form circles in each breakout session and have a dialogue about well, what's happening relative to race and education or race and various aspects of the justice system. So they'll have dialogues on that, not just to find out what's happening, but also to get input on how do we make improvements or what would be the next thing that we ought to be doing. Okay, and you are leading which breakout session? Or well, are facilitating? I'm You're one of the facilitators. One of the program leaders, facilitators for the one that's called um, race and justice and partnerships. So how do we utilize partnerships across different groups to deal with the systemic issues and make progress on the systemic issues that are in the justice system? And why specifically are you involved in this one? Do you have? Oh, no particular reason. Uh, I'm a coordinator for the overall race and juvenile and criminal justice. So this was just one of four. And it's the one. I didn't know if you had a background in um, advocacy or activism or education. Regarding well, this. my background is going back 40 years with. Yeah, roughly 40 years ago now, um, because I, I grew up very white privileged individual in many respects. And um, it's when I came to Rochester at the, to work for Xerox Corporation, a company that Joe Wilson uh, promoted, and you know some of the things about Joe Wilson and his connection to the African American community. Well then when I came here, I ultimately ended up going to a Mac Conception Church just up the street here, um, which was the mission of the Mac Conception Church was to promote the black Christian experience. And I went, what's that? You know, let me understand that. And it is through the understanding of that that I began to really understand more about the oppression, the, re the restrictions, the oppression that exists uh, relative to race and um, I 10 years ago or so I still I really began working actually 15 years ago with people in reentry from prison and jail and that built another level of understanding for me and, and understanding of the racial barriers that exist uh, especially for African American but also for Latino people. Well, very good. Um, and your session, um, you you know, what? How does um, how does a partnership currently exist between um, or related to race and, and justice structural changes? Well, there are a number of partnerships that we have. Um, for example, uh, with a group called uh, UCLM, which is also part of the Coalition for Police Reform. Uh, that group, as a partnership, really worked on the body camera initiative. You know, police got camera, body-worn cameras, and it's now working on well, what are the, um, how can we, you know, how are we going to implement it? Not just that people wear it, but when they're on, when they're off, how do we keep the information, so on and so forth. So that's one. Uh, so working with the coalition police reform on that. But also, for example, with the judiciary, with uh, Judge Dorn, we've been having uh, forums. We've had one forum, we're going to have more forums, in which the judges can, are going to be out in the community with young people, with young adults, and talking about the judicial system and how it works, and getting feedback from people there in the community, okay, what needs to improve? So uh, those are just two examples of the kind of things we've got to do. Okay, and um, what, what's what do you think needs to, what partnerships need to be formed, additional partnerships need to be Well, to me, a fundamental in any of ongoing change is the connection with the community at the grassroots level. So whether it's with um, a group like SWAN, or with um, a group like Pathways to Peace and others, 
or people that live in the Beechwood neighborhood. How do we build those community relationships along with law enforcement, along with the judiciary, to not just make changes structurally, but in fact get the awareness and get the, the, the really linkages to make it effectively implemented? And um, what, um, how does this, the judicial system, relate to other, other breakout groups? Well, I'll, I'll just talk about one. Um, in our efforts, our team's effort, we try to deal with preventive actions also, preventive goals. For example, in the education system, what can we do more working with Rochester City School District and others to um, deal with the code of conduct, restorative practices, uh, behavioral change, uh, family linkages. So how we work with uh, something like the Rochester City School District and other groups, Metro Justice, uh, for example, on getting this done and also how we implement. Because again, until people buy into it, both in the school and uh, in the community, you can change things, but you know it, it won't be as effective as you want it to be. Okay? And so we're trying to do that, but we're also trying to do it with uh, the mental and behavioral health issues that young people have. How do we work with other groups, the Office of Mental Health or the Mental Health Association, various other groups, to really build an awareness and then, uh, uh, because we also have to deal with, in that case, with the stigma that's associated with mental, emotional health, okay? And so, okay, how do we get people to understand it better so it isn't that because you have an issue mentally, you're a jerk or anything, but no, it's no different than having a bad knee. I gotta, I, gotta, I gotta get my knee fixed. What do you see as um, the reasons for disparity uh, between um, race and, and just, or you know, race and justice? Well, or the the, the the difference in in the justice system and how it relates to race. I'd say it's a, a, a number of things. Okay. Um, for example, let me just use marijuana use as, as the example. Um, people in the suburbs, mostly white people, use marijuana as much or more than on a percentage basis than people in the city, African Americans and Latinos. But the arrest rate is three, four times more for the people in the city than it is in the suburbs. Well be a lot of factors in there. One is the concentration of where the police are and what they're looking for versus in the city versus what they're looking for in the suburb. Two is, uh, even if you're arrested, uh, the likelihood of you going into prison or jail is much higher if you're African American or Latino than a white kid. Why? Well, the white kids typically will have much more connections with services in the community or their parents will have connections with that and they'll have a better uh, um, lawyer than, I'll say, the city kid, okay? So it's the factor, it's not that the law is certain, okay, you're gonna, you're gonna put people in jail who are black or Latino at a rate of three to four times. No, no, it's not that. But it's the resources that are available that it really impact, but also the concentration of, of Law enforcement, uh, the way it is, makes it, you know, makes it that more Latinos and African Americans get arrested uh, than white people. So that's an example. Right. Okay. And um, how do you uh, um, how do you see, uh, or what are you hoping to get out of this this discussion? Uh, at the summit? Well, on the partnership and justice, race, partnership, justice, um, what we really would like to do is, one, get feedback from other people about well, what partnerships have worked and haven't worked from their experience, 
and then how we connect with community partners, because we're not really connected well with community partners yet. And then thirdly, uh, getting them involved. Getting the people who come to the summit saying, well, you know, this is something I'd really like to get involved with. Let me sign up to work on this effort or that effort, whatever that could happens to be, because we need more people involved. Now, I know um, when we're talking about uh, poverty, a lot of the problems is that services aren't available to people who have been in prison. Right. Um, and it's when you can't get jobs or housing and right. that, um, chances are the recidivism right. rate will go up. Right. Um, how do you, uh, uh, are you going to, is that something you're going to be addressing or? Well, our group does, overall, we have one of our goals related to reentry services, especially related to juveniles. Okay, so yes, for example, I participate, I go to the Juvenile Justice Council meetings every month, but also, um, we're trying to look at the, we are looking at uh, what Rockland County did a year ago in a memo of understanding of how groups work together to work with juveniles, not just when they've been released from prison or jail, but way before them, pins and all that other sort of stuff, and how they really work as a partnership, a coordinated set of groups, uh, be they the county people, uh, be they providers, be they family groups, community groups. Because until that network exists, and we'll call it the family, it's really hard whether we're dealing with a person coming out of prison or jail, or you know, even a younger person you know, who's just impacted by a lot of things that have happened. Um, it's hard to make real progress. And so getting a kind of a coordinated set of uh, providers and governmental organizations, so on and so forth, working together, including probation, so on and so forth, that's what we're trying to do. Do something like Rockland County. Okay. Now, um, to somebody who is seeing this and it sparks their interest, um, how do they go about, can you tell me how about the summit or where they can sign up, where they can get more information. Do you have well, that information? You can, you can register at the summit, for the summit, by going to this faithsracerock.org summit 2015 website, okay? And you can sign up, you can register for that. And you need to register to get in, okay? Or you can call 325-5116, extension 1732. So that's the way you sign up for it. Then when you get there, um, we will have, especially in our four breakout sessions, I can't speak for all of them, but as part of the survey that you fill out at the end, it's gonna be, now, if you would like to be involved in a group, give us your name, contact information, boom. We'll try to get you linked up.